This tutorial will demonstrate how to connect a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor to an ESP32 running MicroPython. The sensor data will then be transmitted wirelessly to a Raspberry Pi using MQTT protocol and the results will be displayed on an I2C OLED display. My videos are fast paced but all the code, notes, updates and more are available on my website and as always a link will be placed in the description. This tutorial builds on my last video which showed how to load the MicroPython firmware on an ESP32, use R shell to manipulate files, and run Python code in the REPL. I recommend you watch it first. All the tools from the previous video have been installed on a Raspberry Pi running the latest updated version of Raspbian Jesse. There has been one breaking change since the last video with respect to loading the MicroPython firmware, which I'd like to address. Therefore, I'll use the ESP tool to erase the existing firmware on the ESP32. Again, this has already been covered in part one. I already downloaded the latest firmware build for the ESP32 to the downloads folder. I'll copy the file name to the clipboard. ESP tool is used again to write the firmware. Erase flash is changed to write flash. Notice that I now specify hex address 1000 for the starting address instead of zero. This is new since the last video and it's mandatory. I specify the downloads folder and paste in the firmware file name. The new firmware is now being written to the ESP32. Okay, the board's ready to go. MQTT is a very lightweight connectivity protocol. It's very popular with IoT devices because it requires much less code and memory compared to other approaches such as a REST API. It uses a published subscribe model. A single broker acts as a server and manages messages among multiple clients. A client can publish a message to a topic and any client that subscribes to the topic will get the message. For this video, an ESP32 client connected to a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor will publish the sensor data to a topic called temp humidity. Topics are usually organized in a hierarchical order using slashes like the file system on a computer. They are referred to as topic trees and it's possible to reference them with wildcards plus for single level and hash for multi-level. For example, you could have topics called sensors slash temperature slash attic and sensors slash temperature slash workshop. Then you could subscribe to both by using sensors slash temperature slash hash. For this simple example, there'll be just one topic, temp humidity. The Raspberry Pi will be the broker and it'll also be the client. A Python MQTT client running on the Pi will subscribe to the temp humidity topic and show the results on an OLED display. Again, this is a very simple example. You could have multiple ESP32s publishing and subscribing to topics, and all types of sensors such as solar power tracking, water pressure, motion detection, GPS, beacons, etc. And it doesn't have to be limited to sensors. You could fire relays, activate home automation macros, run programs, and much more. Mosquito will be used for the server. It's an open source message broker that implements the MQTT protocol. It can be installed on a Raspberry Pi using sudo apt-get install mosquito. Mosquito clients is also installed. It's a command line MQTT client that's helpful for debugging. In addition to the Pi, we'll need a MicroPython MQTT client for the ESP32. A good one is available from the MicroPython lib repository. On the GitHub site, scroll down to umqtt.simple and click it. Then click umqtt, click simple Pi, click raw to show only the code. This is a simple MQTT client for MicroPython. I'll right-click to download the SimplePy file to the Pi and save it in my home folder. Once the download completes, close the browser. ls shows the downloaded SimplePy file. Our shell is run to connect to the ESP32, which is plugged into the Pi via USB cable on TTY USB 0. ls slash PyBoard shows that the ESP32 contains only a single file, bootPy. mkdir slash PyBoard slash umqtt creates a folder on the ESP32 called umqtt. ls slash pyboard again shows the newly created folder. ls alone shows the contents of my home directory on the Pi. cp simplepy slash pyboard slash umqtt slash copies the simplepy file to the umqtt folder on the ESP32. ls slash pyboard slash umqtt shows the simplepy file was copied successfully. The DHT22 temperature humidity sensor is easy to connect to the ESP32. Pin 1 VCC on the DHT22 is connected to a 3.3 volt pin on the ESP32. Pin 2, the DHT22 data line, is connected to GPIO 15. You can use any available GPIO pin. Pin 3 is left disconnected, and pin 4 ground is connected to a ground on the ESP32. Normally you'd connect a pull-up resistor between the data line and the 3.3 volt line, but it's not necessary because the ESP32 GPIO pins have internal pull-ups that can be turned on from the code. On a small breadboard, I have a cheap ESP32 bought on eBay and a DHT22 temperature humidity sensor. 
3.3 volt pin from the ESP32 is connected to a rail on the breadboard. This will be the 3.3 volt rail. A ground pin is connected to a ground rail. The DHC22 pin 1 VCC is connected to the 3.3 volt rail. Pin 4 ground is connected to the ground rail. Pin 2 data is connected to the ESP32 GPIO15. It's a good practice in terms of reliability to keep the data wire short, preferably under 15 centimeters. Okay, the temperature humidity sensor is ready to go, so let's create the code to publish the sensor data. Back on the Pi, I open idle3. I'll create a new blank file for the ESP32 MQTT client. From time, sleep is imported. From umqtt.simple, MQTT client is imported. This is the MicroPython MQTT client that we downloaded from GitHub and copied to the UMQTT folder on the ESP32. From machine, pin is imported. This library provides control of the ESP32 GPIO pins. From DHT, import DHT22. The MicroPython firmware for the ESP32 comes with this built-in DHT library. A server constant holds the IP address of the broker, which is just the IP address of the Pi. Your Pi will probably have a different IP address, so open a terminal and type hostname tac i. This will provide the IP address of your Pi. Set your server address to the return value. Client ID is a unique ID for this client. I'll use ESP32 underscore DHT22 underscore sensor. Topic indicates the topic name that will be published. The B preceding the topic indicates bytes. It's not necessary because this method will automatically convert the string to bytes, but I like to add the B to remind me of the conversion. Client instantiates an MQTT client. The client ID and server address are passed. Client connect attempts to connect to the MQTT broker. A sensor is instantiated for the DHT22 on GPIO 15. Pin in indicates that the GPIO pin is an input as opposed to an output. Pin pull-up turns on the GPIO internal pull-up. This obviates the need for the pull-up resistor between the DHT22 data line and VCC. The main program loop is an infinite while loop. A try statement is used to catch errors. The sensor measure method pulls the DHT22. T stores the temperature and H stores the humidity. Occasionally the DHT22 will have a bad reading. Is instance checks to make sure that the temperature and humidity readings are numeric float values. If so, a variable MSG stores the byte formatted temperature and humidity values. Client publish publishes to the broker. Topic is the temp humidity topic and MSG is the message, containing the temperature and humidity values. Else catches bad readings and prints an error message to the console. Accept OS error fires if the sensor can't be read and again logs the error to the console. The loop pauses for 4 seconds and repeats. Please note that you must wait at least 2 seconds between calls to the DHT22 to avoid errors. Ok, that's it for the ESP32 client code. I'll save the program to the documents folder and call it DHT publish. Back in our shell, CD documents to switch to the documents folder where the ESP32 client code was saved. LS shows the DHT published Python file. CP DHT published.py slash pyboard copies the client code to the root directory of the ESP32. LS slash pyboard shows the file was copied successfully. Type REPL to access the MicroPython REPL. Before running the client, it's necessary to connect the ESP32 to a Wi Fi network. Import network loads the network library. Ok, something went wrong. Looks like loading the network library caused the ESP32 to crash, which disconnected our shell. I did a little research into the import network crash, and someone suggested that I should use a shorter USB cable. They theorized that the network library turns on the Wi-Fi radio, which causes a power draw, that when combined with the increased resistance of a long USB cable, can cause a brownout. This helped, but it didn't fix the problem. But it was on the right track. Turns out my cheap eBay ESP32 has a defective micro USB port that resists current flow. You can see that if I jiggle the USB plug, the ESP32 power LED blinks and can even go out. I tried reflowing the solder, but it didn't help. I'll remove the bad ESP32 from the breadboard and replace it with a Wemos Lowland 32 that I got on AliExpress. This board appears to be much higher quality. It's also narrower so I can access the breadboard tie points on both sides of the board and it has a lithium battery jack and charging circuit. The breakout board pinout is different from the previous board. I'll reconnect the ground rail to a ground pin on the ESP32 and connect the 3.3 volt rail to a 3.3 volt pin. The data line is reconnected to GPIO 15 and the USB cable is plugged in. The LED on the board does not come on unless the battery is charging. I assume this is to save battery power. Ok, I restarted the Pi. From a terminal, our shell is connected to the new ESP32 board. Type REPL to open the REPL and import network. Now that's more like it. The network library is loaded. 
Station instantiates a network WLAN and enables the station interface. Station Active True activates the network interface. Station Connect connects to my Wi-Fi access point. The method takes two parameters. The first is the SSID of my access point, which is Rototron, and the second is the Wi-Fi password, which I will change before publishing this video. We're connected and we got an IP address for the ESP32 board, which is 192.168.192.19. Import DHT Publish runs the client. For some reason, the first reading of the DHT22 often fails. However, a few seconds later, and we get a good reading, 25.3 for temperature in Celsius and 38.5 for the humidity percentage. Every four seconds, the sensor is pulled and new data is published. We can test that the data is actually being published by using the Mosquito command line client. In a new terminal window, type mosquito sub tac d to enable debug messages, tac t for topic, followed by our topic, temp humidity. The Mosquito client connects to the MQTT broker and subscribes to the temp humidity topic. As the ESP32 publishes new sensor readings, the data is displayed in the terminal. 25.3 temperature and 38.9 humidity. Control C is used to exit the client. The command line is great for testing, but now let's create a Python client program that's a little more useful. I'll install the Paho Python client using sudo pip3 install paho-mqtt. The Python client will run on the same Raspberry Pi that's also serving the Mosquito MQTT broker and display the temperature and humidity readings on an SSD1306 OLED display. Adafruit provides a simple Python library for driving the SSD1306 display. It's installed using sudo pip3 install adafruit-ssd1306. The Adafruit library and all required dependencies have been installed. The OLED display is very easy to connect to the Pi. The display's SDA pin is connected to the Pi's SDA pin, which is GPIO2. The display's SCL pin is connected to the Pi's SCL, GPIO3. The BCC pin is connected to a 3.3 volt pin on the Pi, and the grounds are connected. The display uses an I2C protocol, so it only needs two GPIO pins for communication, in addition to the power and ground. Next to a Raspberry Pi 3 on a breadboard, I have a small 128 by 32 pixel OLED display. The SDA pin from the display is connected to GPIO2 on the Pi. The SCL pin is connected to GPIO3 on the Pi. BCC is connected to a 3.3 volt pin. Ground is connected to a ground pin. That's all it takes for the display hardware. OLED is a great solution for the Pi because it runs at 3.3 volts, it's very bright, and it's energy efficient. I'll open idle3 and create a blank file for the Python client. The Paho MQTT client is imported as MQTT. The Adafruit SSD1306 library is imported. The Adafruit library is very rudimentary. All it can really do is transfer images to the display. Therefore, from PIL, which stands for Python Imaging Library, Image, image draw, and image font are imported. The PL library lets you create images and draw shapes and fonts. Disp instantiates an Adafruit SSD 1306 128 by 32 pixel display. My I2C OLED display doesn't have a reset pin, so zero is passed for the required RST parameter. Begin initializes the display. Font path specifies the file location on the Pi of the Roboto condensed regular true type font. This font will be used to display text, but any true type font could be used. Font instantiates an image font. TrueType takes parameters for the font path and the font size, which is set to 22. The method display data will be used to display temperature and humidity on a monochrome OLED display. A new image is instantiated. The first parameter is mode. One indicates one bit per pixel, which is black and white mode. The width and height are set to width and height of the OLED display. Draw instantiates an image draw object, which is used to draw shapes and text on the image. Draw text writes text at location 0, 8. The text is the formatted temperature. Font specifies the Roboto condensed regular font above and fill sets the color. Since this is a monochrome blue display, there's only one color. Non-zero numbers illuminate the pixels and zero turns the pixel off. Draw text is used again at location 71, 8 to display the formatted humidity. Draw rectangle creates an outline of a bar chart to graph the current temperature. 0, 0, 50, 8 defines the bounding box for the rectangle. Outline 255 illuminates the border of the rectangle, and fill 0 leaves the inside of the rectangle dark. Draw rectangle is used again at 71, 0, 121, 8 to create an outline for a humidity graph. A third draw rectangle fills the temperature graph proportionally to the current temperature. Fill is non-zero, so the rectangle is fully illuminated. 
I should have used 255 instead of 1 to be more consistent, but it'll function the same. Again, non-zero numbers are illuminated, and zero is dark when working with monochrome displays. A fourth draw rectangle fills the humidity graph. The display is cleared, and the image is transferred to the display. The image isn't actually displayed until the display method is called. A callback function called onConnect will fire when the MQGT client connects to the broker. The most important argument is RC, which stands for result code. It's printed to the terminal. If it's zero, then the connection is successful. I'm trying to keep the code simple for demo purposes, but it'd be a good idea to add some error checking here to handle failed result codes. Upon connect, the client subscribe method is called to subscribe to the temp humidity topic. Another callback function called onMessage will fire when a message is received from the broker. The MSG argument is the message, which in this example contains the temperature and humidity. Temperature and humidity are extracted from the message payload. Decode UTF-8 translates the byte data to a string, which is split on the comma into two parts, temperature and humidity. This comprehension converts the two values from string to numeric floats. The data is printed to the terminal, and the display data is passed the temperature and humidity, which will be presented on the OLED display with a bar graph. Client instantiates an MQTT client. Client onConnect sets the onConnect callback to the function above. Client onMessage sets the onMessage callback function. Client Connect initiates a client connection. Localhost is used for the host address instead of an IP because this client and the broker are both running on the same Raspberry Pi. 183 is the port, and 60 specifies to keep alive. This is the number of seconds to time out after no activity. Client Loop Forever blocks the program and causes it to run indefinitely, during which it handles all network traffic, callbacks, and reconnections. The program is saved to the Documents folder and called DHT Subscribe. Since this program uses the I2C communication protocol, it's necessary to enable the I2C interface. Click the Pi main menu, click Preferences, click Raspberry Pi Configuration, click the Interfaces tab, and for I2C, check Enable. To ensure the OLED display is wired properly, open a terminal and type I2C Detect TAC Y1. A single I2C device is present at hex address 3C, which is the default for my display. I moved the breadboard with the ESP32 and DHT22 sensor outside. I'm powering it with a 3.7 volt LiPo battery. The board can now be used wirelessly to monitor and publish temperature and humidity data as long as it's within range of my Wi-Fi access point. Now I'll run the Python client program on the Pi. Result code 0 indicates a successful client connection to the MQTT broker. The temperature and humidity data is received and presented on the OLED display. Please let me know if you found this tutorial helpful and let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos. You can support this channel by subscribing, leaving a like, and sharing. Thanks for watching.